Savitri, Book Two, The Book of the Traveler of the Worlds, Canto Six, The Kingdoms and Godheads of the Greater Life. Transmuted our past suffering's memories into an old sadness's sweet escaping trail. Turned are her tears to gems of diamond pain, her sorrow into a magic crown of song. Brief are her snatches of felicity that touch the surface, then escape or die. A lost remembrance echoes in her depths. A deathless longing is hers, a veiled self's call. A prisoner in the mortal's limiting world. A spirit wounded by life sobs in her breast. A cherished suffering is her deepest cry. A wanderer on forlorn despairing roots, along the roads of sound, a frustrate voice forsaken cries to a forgotten bliss. Astray in the echo caverns of desire, it guards the phantoms of a soul's dead hopes, and keeps alive the voice of perished things, or lingers upon sweet and errant notes hunting for pleasure in the heart of pain. A fateful hand has touched the cosmic chords, and the intrusion of a troubled strain covers the inner music's hidden key that guides unheard the surface cadences. Yet is it joy to live and to create, and Joy to love and labor, though all fails. And joy to seek, though all we find deceives. And all on which we lean betrays our trust. Yet something in its depths was worth the pain. A passionate memory haunts with ecstasy's fire. Even grief has joy hidden beneath its roots, for nothing is truly vain the one has made. In our defeated hearts, God's strength survives, and victory star still lights our desperate road. Our death is made a passage to new worlds. This to life's music gives its anthem swell. To all she lends the glory of her voice. Heaven's raptures whisper to her heart and pass. Earth's transient yearnings cry from her lips and fade. Alone the God-given hymn escapes her art that came with her from her spiritual home, but stopped halfway and failed. A silent word, awake in some deep pause of waiting worlds, a murmur suspended in eternity's hush. But no breath comes from the supernal peace. A sumptuous interlude occupies the ear, and the heart listens, and the soul consents. An evanescent music it repeats, wasting on transience time's eternity. A tremolo of the voices of the hours, oblivious, screens the high intended theme the self-embodying spirit came to play on the vast clavichord of nature force. Only a mighty murmur 
here and there, of the eternal word, the blissful voice, or beauty's touch, transfiguring heart and sense. A wandering splendor and a mystic cry recalls the strength and sweetness heard no more. Here is the gap. Here stops or sinks life's force. This deficit paupers the magician's skill. This want makes all the rest seem thin and bare. A half sight draws the horizon of her acts. Her depths remember what she came to do, but the mind has forgotten, or the heart mistakes. In nature's endless lines is lost the God. In knowledge to sum up omniscience, in action to erect the omnipotent, to create her creator here was her heart's conceit, to invade the cosmic scene with utter God, toiling to transform the still far absolute into an all-fulfilling epiphany, into an utterance of the ineffable. She would bring the glory here of the absolute's force, change poise into creation's rhythmic swing, marry with the sky of calm a sea of bliss, a fire to call eternity into time, make body's joy as vivid as the soul's. Earth she would lift to neighborhood with heaven, labor's life to equate with the supreme and reconcile the eternal and the abyss. Her pragmatism of the transcendent truth fills silence with the voices of the gods. But in the cry, the single voice is lost. For nature's vision climbs beyond her acts. A life of gods in heaven she sees above, a demigod Emerging from an ape is all she can in our mortal element. Here, the half-god, the half-titan, are her peak. This greater life wavers twixt earth and sky. A poignant paradox pursues her dreams. Her hooded energy moves an ignorant world. To look for a joy her own strong clasp puts off. In her embrace it cannot turn to its source. Immense her power, endless her act's vast drive. Astray is its significance and lost. Although she carries in her secret breast the law and journeying curve of all things born, her knowledge partial seems, her purpose small. On a soil of yearning tread her sumptuous hours. A leaden nescience weighs the wings of thought. Her power oppresses the being with its garbs, her actions prison its immortal gaze. A sense of limit haunts her masteries, and nowhere is assured content or peace. For all the depth and beauty of her work, a wisdom lacks that sets the spirit free, an old and faded charm had now her face, and palled for him 
her quick and curious lore. His wide soul asked a deeper joy than hers.